Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Much like last week, this week we're focusing on a affordable whiskey, Cutty Sark. Not the Prohibition, not the Tam O'Shanter, not the Storm, but the everyday basic Cutty Sark. Now, much like many people who are now my age sort of approaching their 30s, well, this is more of a personal experience, I suppose. I'm generalizing that. The first time I ever saw or heard of this whiskey was in the film Goodfellas. Um, I can't remember the name of the club. I think it's not called the Coco Club. That's in a different gangster movie. But as they roll, it's as they're making the owner like sell everything because he's gone into business with them. And you see cases of this stuff being rolled into the club and then it gets rolled out into another truck like 10 seconds later. And then also before um, Tommy shoots Spider's character in the foot, I believe he asks him for a cutty and water, which is important because we'll talk about mixing with this. But this is an extremely popular whiskey, certainly in America. Uh, oddly, its home is actually considered the Glen Rothes Distillery. So at some point, those two have gone hand in hand with each other. Um, brief history about Cutty Sark. Much like J&B, uh, it was actually uh, invented by Berry Brothers and Rudd, the famous wine merchants in London. So the history with that company is incredible already. And then as it's grown up and done different things, it has gone into different ownership and currently is owned by, I'm definitely going to pronounce this wrong, Le, Mar Le Martini Ca? I think it's Le Martini Quay or Ca? Uh, they're a French company, apologies if you're watching, who own the Glen Murray distillery. Um, have done for a number of years since uh, LVMH sold it. So that's now, this is now in their hands. And obviously Cutty's Ark itself is a very famous boat and it is mentioned in the Tam O'Shanter. Robbie Burns poem, and one of the best blended whiskies I've ever tried, is the Cutty Sark Tam O'Shanter, which was this 25-year-old, mostly sherried whiskey, which pretty much was like Highland Park and Macallan in a bottle with some North British grain. Um, it was just incredible, and I would like to own a bottle of that. If you've never seen it, Google Cutty Sark Tam O'Shanter. Presentation is incredible. It, it tastes as good as it looks. It's about 200 quid which isn't bad for a 25-year-old anything in the spirits world these days. But yeah, um, has had quite a history, is associated with very historical ships, very historical poets, and very historical films in Goodfellas, um, which is still one of my favorite films of all time. But regarding the whiskey, let's put it down. And if you go to Cutty Sark's website, which I only did a couple of days before we're filming this, they list it's a very well put together website. Some of the wording is questionable. Um, I suppose that's taste more than anything, but uh, they break down all of their profiles for all of their whiskies. This is the first whiskey you will see, and they say it is designed for mixing. So for those of you watching this who are a bit down on blended whiskey for whatever reason, everyone has their reasons, this isn't something that's meant to be drank next to a Macallan 18 year old or a Glendronach 12 year old. It's just much like the famous, uh, the, the Smoky Black from Famous Christ we did last week. It is meant to be something you can literally grab, pour it in the nicest way possible, kind of forget about it, but just know you have a glass of whiskey, which is what you enjoy with ice, with water, mixed with ginger beer, which is a particularly nice way to drink this <clears throat> with a load of ice inside it and like a sprig of mint, tastes delicious. Um, so yeah, if you, even if you go to Cutty Sark's website, it's not something that they say you should try neat and it will blow your mind. I think I bought this for just over £17, with some shipping costs for some of the bottles too. And yeah, it's not going to blow your mind in any way, but it's just something where you as a whiskey drinker, say you're on a budget, we all kind of are, and I've, I've been on a budget in the last year or so, just to, in case anything goes wrong. So to spend less than £20 on a bottle and be able to enjoy it neat, as I do, or just to mix it. I'm not a fan of whiskey and ice, but a tall drink with ginger beer and some ice and some mint is, is a delicious way to just enjoy an evening with a book or a film. Um, that's enough about me. Let's smell and taste and see what's going on. Okay, so this is significantly more grain forward than the, uh, the smoky black. And indeed is probably one of the most grain forward whiskies I've ever come across. It's full of quite typical flavors. It's got loads of vanilla running through there. There's a nice kind of 
aura of citrus about it. Like it's kind of lemony, kind of orangey, a little bit limey. Just citrus as a whole. But it smells quite creamy. Um, it has this nice, soft, rounded, not weight to it, but just like a creaminess, a texture, almost like double cream or something. So yeah, pretty light, pretty approachable. Not mind blowing, but there, nonetheless. Let's taste. Really soft, like probably the softest whiskey you will ever drink that's blended. Considering it's really grain forward, I thought it would have quite heat to it. Quite a heat to it, I should say, but I've not drank a lot from that bottle and I've had it for about two weeks. And it's opened up nicely. Um, but yeah, it is so just soft and sweet and easy drinking. You can see why a lot of people drink this all over the world. Because it's just easy. Slight tang of grain in the back. That slightly unusual industrial note that you get from grain whiskey that's young, it's a little bit plasticky. Um, yeah, soft, sweet, creamy, bit citrusy, vanilla by the bucket load. Nice and approachable. Um, given the time that the, the French company, whose name I won't butcher again on camera, have owned it, I don't know how much the recipe will have changed, so I don't know if this contains more Glen Marais than usual. It might, it might not. Um, whatever the single malts, excuse me, whatever the single malts that are in there are, it's probably some of the most approachable things you can come up with. But yeah, it's not as complex as the Smoky Black, which as itself wasn't a hugely complex whiskey. So I'm gonna score that a six, which seems very low. Uh, there are blended whiskies out there which are better than this, but I think if you just want a bit of a cheap thrill, and we all like that sometimes, uh, this is just something perfect to go along with it. Um, mix, neat, ice, whatever you want to do with it. But I have respect for it. It's something which has been present in my life even before I drank whiskey. is like a cultural influence. Um, yeah, that's a 6 out of 10. It ain't bad, but you get what you pay for at like 16, 17 pounds a bottle. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of Cutty Sark, and if you've tried any of the others, like the Storm or the Prohibition or the Tam O'Shanter, let me know because they are very, very good. Like, you know, 7.5 plus blended whiskies in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that is the standard Cutty Sark whiskey. This is 6 out of 10. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next week. Cheers.